Welcome back to the Virgo channel. My name is Laura. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to do a general message for Virgo. Know that energy is fluid. Worlds could be reversed. Interpret the message as it best resonates with you. Also know on this channel, I like to dive deep within the readings. So I do look at everything, but we take time to look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, see how they play those karmic themes. It's more about why are you attracting this person into your life? Like, why is your person doing what they're doing? And how can you quantum jump into a reality that you want to experience? So I do look and see what your person's going to do. However, once you know the information, a lot of times you can shape shift your reality. And that's really important if you're dealing with a karmic, right? It's someone that comes in and out of your life, someone that doesn't give you what you need emotionally and doesn't really care but then there's still a spiritual connection so a lot of times we want to understand why what what are we supposed to learn how can we integrate the spiritual lessons so that we can raise our vibration and not be connected anymore because once you learn the spiritual lesson that karmic cord is cut just is because you can't look at the person the same way you can't a lot of times we see a person for their potential and not really for who they are and we don't realize that we're coming from a place where we're depleted. Emotionally, we haven't gotten anything for a long time. So it's almost like as if you were wearing beer goggles. You think that the person looks a certain way, but you think a person's character is a certain way. And then once you're in the relationship, you're realizing like that person isn't really who they portrayed themselves to be but then we say well why did I attract that person if I think that I am a true person there's always a spiritual reason so it's never that you lose you have to look at your relationships more from a spiritual perspective otherwise if you have, keep dating people that are you know wounded and they haven't done any healing over time you would think that there was something wrong with you you know because of how that person acted when really it has nothing to do with you, why the person acts the way that they do. It has everything to do with them. However, it's waking up things with inside of you, which need to be healed, that you have repressed, suppressed, you no longer realize it, but the universe always conspires to bring you what you need so you can be a clear conduit so that spirit could work through you. See, the universe is God. And that energy, when, when you are fully balanced, is your energy. However, we tend to live in a very imbalanced world and have to interact with imbalanced people. And that gets us imbalanced. So we don't realize that we're imbalanced. But certain behaviorisms and habits that you formed from a place of survival now a lot of times are what blocks you from actually manifesting what you're trying to manifest so it's to heal the effects of trauma really is what this channel is all about all my channels and my books and my products everything it's it's what my niche is and it's because i had to heal the effects of trauma you know and we form habits and behaviorisms that are in alignment with that trauma that block us from creating our heaven on earth all right now if you want to enter into winning a free reading with me you have to be open to getting a shadow reading you got to like the video subscribe to the channel write the word of the video in your comment bar the word of the video is always on the first card that i pull out and it's the underlining energy that tells me why everyone's doing what they're doing however if i notice that the card that i'm pulling out is like I pulled that card last week. I pulled that card two days ago. I pulled that card. Then I'm going to pull another card. You never have to write the second card in there. But it, again, people's energy doesn't really change that much every single day. You know, people have epiphanies eventually after they get tired of looking at things from a certain way. And if they're stubborn, they can look at that way, that limited perception, that narrow, be narrow minded for like months on end before the universe actually says, okay, enough, you're still not figuring it out. I'm going to bring you someone. And I'm feeling like almost like you're connected to someone that was, they were okay in the consciousness that they were, they were holding their ground um, on how they wanted to view you and how they wanted to view the connection. They wanted to act as if they read the, 
they made the right decision is what I'm feeling, but they're not. And I feel like because they're talking to other people now, and they're talking to them about souls mates and spiritual connections, whether it's something that's really true. Now, I don't know why I'm feeling that. Again, sometimes spirit gives me a little spiritual nugget before we jump in. Again, that says, well, this is what the issue is. So let's see, what is the word of the video? Well, the word of the video is overstimulation, overstimulation. Too much thought, too much emotion creates overstimulation. So I feel like somebody's ruminating on what they did. They're ruminating on you. They don't know how to fix this connection. That's what I feel like. I feel like when this person and you were dealing with each other, they they got triggered and they, they got triggered because there's a part of this person that didn't really want to be in any type of committed relationship. And they come across as almost like a player, but a jokester, like someone that would be the life of the party, someone that, and so I feel like this person like treated you in a way that was from a real low vibration. You felt like they didn't want to ever e elevate the relationship. They just wanted to breadcrumb you. They wanted to talk uh, like sexually to you. They didn't want to put any work in though. They didn't want to take time. Hey, if you would meet them at work or if you would meet them like at a bar, if you would meet them, like it was always like an afterthought. Like you always felt like you're not taking me seriously. This isn't enough. And this person kept trying to like treat you from this real low vibration. And I feel like they were tactless. Like when you met them, they were somebody that just you know, only cared about themselves, were very selfish, got stuck in their addictions, get stuck, stuck in, you know, relationships that don't mean anything. They're just very surface, not having good character at all. So if they actually had a business, they did everything sh shady. Like they weren't paying their taxes. They weren't, this person was at a very low vibration. However, that is not the face that they presented themselves as. And they are very good at, you know, creating the facade. I feel like when you were, when you were dealing with them, it's like this person just emotionally tried to keep you like stuck in your emotions to the point that I felt like you were like drowning. Now I feel like this person is drowning in their emotions. This person had a hard time of letting go of the past and the fears that are associated with it. So they continue to manifest in chaos in the relationship. And I feel like you hold that energy too. You're a magnet of who and what comes into your life. So I understand a lot of times the what the fears of the past sometimes are not even your fears. You could have grown up in an environment that you saw a really bad codependent relationship and that is like a fear of saying, well, I don't want that to happen to me because we can inherit ancestral karma. Now, I feel like a lot of times that's where toxic relationships come from. We're taught in a certain environment. However, it doesn't necessarily even mean that. I feel as if this person just had one bad relationship and that bad relationship like winds up continuing to play out. But I also believe that they do things to make people not feel comfortable in the relationship. See, chaos can't play out if it's just one person that's chaotic. It's the dynamic of two people together and their attachment styles, their spiritual blocks, their wounds, and that pain continues to play out where I feel like this person always winds up with karmic people and they don't let go of the past because they never heal their shadows that are associated with the past. So the same types of experiences play out. The only thing that's different is the person, but it's the same types of karmic themes. 
And that's because, again, they haven't healed. So they will always play out. This person's like coming into the relationship with all the baggage from the previous relationships. And they expect it to be different. And that is for you too. You've gone through relationships and you really haven't learned how to heal them. You don't know why. So it's like you don't date for long periods of time. And then finally you meet somebody and you finally let your guard down. But there's all this fear and then it continues to play out. So I'm feeling like that you're dealing with a, an avoidant attachment style and you are the, an, an, rather that person's an anxious avoidant attachment style. And you're someone that has abandonment issues. You're someone that needs that emotional support because you didn't get it in childhood. So you always wind up with a person that can never give you what you need. Never. That's always like the karmic theme. And so this person normally winds up with karmic people that are toxic, that will try to manipulate them, change them. And so then there's this runner chaser dynamic that it's not twin flamey because no one is looking to evolve into the higher states of consciousness. It's more like, I don't want to deal with you. <clears throat> and I feel like this person just always got into those types of relationships. So they began to just say, well, it's all about me. And I even believe that they have problems within just regular friendship types of relationships anything that creates trust anything about intimacy anything about having to be transparent is difficult for this person because tactlessness is all about themselves which means that they're never getting building an emotional bond that's what prevents us from you know being like not caring about the other person right it's like if we're only giving ourselves energy we're not building any emotional rapport we're not we're not thinking about that person really one way or the other except uh for them to fill a need and that's what your person was doing it's like they were going about life looking at people to fill their need and their emotional need and but it was again from this real low energy like almost like just <laughs> Not even taking the person to dinner, okay? More or less, like, what is the least amount of work that I can do to, like, to be with this person? And when I'm with them, what low things can I make them do to please me? Like, this again, tactless energy. And, again, also about the finances, which is, you know, if you went out to eat with this person, you would always wind up paying more if you split the bill. It's like just very shady, all about them energy where this person grew up in, in, in an environment that taught them how to do that. And then what happens is that you wind up not really becoming a mo The more that you saw of this behavior, the more unattractive this person became to you. And that's the thing. And this person got tired in the dry spells. Like there was a lack of um, sexual connection over time. And they didn't really understand why that happened. And it, it happened because this person, like you saw their character, you fell in love with who you thought that they were. And now you see who they really are. And so you're seeing that they're not really on your vibration, that they need a lot of healing. And this person would continue to like treat you like a child, like scold you, lash out, like at you as a way of controlling. They, they're not emotionally stable in themselves. A person that does things from a shady perspective and tactless is, is all about that, then what it is is that they don't really care about anyone else. So they're always kind of looking around. They're always doing things underhandedly. It would always create overstimulation, right? Because over time, people, if, if the, that's your natural way of being, eventually the truth comes out. So I feel like this person is in a place now where it's come out about their behavior. People have seen that. 
So I feel like you're dealing with someone that when you met them, they weren't looking for a relationship, that they ran from person to person to person to person to person. It was all about filling their needs. They did not mind about being controlling or authoritarian, but like not in a healthy way, uh, more about controlling, like again, treated like a child, like you're not going to be treated on equal ground with this person. And the thing is, this person like has a hard time in relationships. They felt they feel suffocated in relationships. However, they don't have a problem dominating and suffocating you. And that's the thing. It's like this person doesn't allow you to have an identity where they feel so inadequate about who they are that that they how they maneuver now the truth is coming out and it's like almost like when they were with you they they're either all or nothing but like and either one is like like way too much meaning they're not going to give you anything at all or so smothering and controlling and manipulative and you know it's all about what their needs are that you wouldn't even want to be in a connection with this person they're vibrating at a very low vibration and the thing is they'll say that they'll change and I feel like a few times you tried to be like I don't really want this I feel like I've already lived through this before and it's triggering my reaction to the memory meaning like I don't trust you anymore because you're so in this energy still so that's why they're overstimulated. They're overstimulating because you took your power back. And I also believe that there's other things in this person's life that are also like coming to a head because of that energy. Feel like they were shady. They were shady in all in all endeavors. And they really only cared about themselves. contracts so i believe that this person doesn't really know how to be in a regular relationship they what feels comfortable to them is codependence what feels comfortable to them is that they can be the authoritarian and everybody else is going to be subservient to their needs that they don't really have to give anything you know um, a karmic contract is one where you're reliving your childhood trauma or a trauma that you inherited from your parents. So that could be like growing up in a codependent relationship where watching one parent always emotionally show up, but never the other person showing up for them without them screaming at them, without them like really getting into their masculine energy, like where I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do. Like that person like doesn't show up. So there's always anxiety for that, you know, who is ever connected to them because they know that they're not going to show up. So they have to remind them and remind them and remind them and tell them what to do and do it. And, and so, again, intimacy problems because now you're smothering me. Now you're telling me what to do. Now you're, I don't like your attitude. I don't like where, again, no one wants to be the parent of someone that they're with to make sure that they show up. It's like over time, it's, it winds up, it's a contract. It's like we need each other, but we hate each other. And that one person that's still the parent that's like, do this, do this, do this. Are you going to be there? Are you going to do like, is the micromanager of that person's life winds up getting hated, but it's like they can't live without that job because they don't have an identity. Their identity actually is controlling that person, showing up for that person. So if you take away that person, they don't know who they are. And so I feel like that's what this person is used to. They're used to people that give way too much. And But the problem is, is that when that relationship ends, and it always ends because they don't want that. It's boring. It's like they wind up cheating. They wind up, you know, not wanting to be in a karmic contract. They want to be, feel like they're with a partner. They want to feel 
you know, they see that their relationships don't look like that. They don't set their relationship up for that. However, they can look around and see that other people can have healthy relationships and they want that. They wind up in karmic contracts and that's because they're always coming from this low vibration. But now I feel like, again, they've come to a place where, you know, eventually the universe comes and collects time to collect its due. Right. It's like it says you need to be in alignment with my laws. And th that's the laws of love. And if you're tackling and you're so shady in every area of your life, well, you know, eventually the bigger you are, the harder you fall. Again, they like to be the authority. They want to be in control. And, and they want to be perceived as if they're perfect, you know, um, but they expect you to be perfect, right? And that's, you give me everything that I need and whatever their version of perfect is, right? Because there's no such thing as perfect. Only God is perfect. The universe is perfect. However, we're not perfect because not every single person that you come in contact with is going to love you is going to think that you're the best things in slice bread, that it doesn't work that way. This person needs to be seen that way, though. And so this is the only thing that makes this person believe that and feel that because they feel so inadequate. person that needs to see, be seen as perfect, we're really walking around with a lot of shame. A lot of shame. They it's, Again, they were told that they were bad. And so... The karmic contract is is the fact that you get involved with someone that you have to treat them like a god where they're treating you like really badly in this particular story where they want to be the authoritarian, but they don't do anything to earn that. And I believe that is coming to a head. And that's the thing. So you want to know why this person had an issue with you is because you are involved very involved in your life, in your career, in the things which you have going on. And so they like to put themselves in competition with them a lot. Got to about that. So they always like to put themselves in competition with you. It's again, instead of letting you have your moment instead of letting you you know shine it's like this person wouldn't be able to deal with it they need the attention on them they need to be praised so if you go out and you're someone big well then who's giving this person attention and then it's then they wind up comparing you to them it makes them feel inadequate because they are not really living their life. They, again, the, how they come in is they they find somebody to, again, mold that person into who they want to. And the issue is, is that they come in with all this passion and love, but very fast within the relationship, within like a few months, there is no more passion. There is no more because you're like, okay, like you're not really giving me anything. And the reason why is like this person just wants you to be like subservient. And you, again, it's like being a real person and involved in your life and having a good life. Well, it triggers this person. They have too much trauma that they need to heal. It's like, I feel like things are the past within their childhood past relationships they still hold on to a lot of anger and a lot of resentment because they haven't learned the spiritual lesson this this is really and i'm not i'm going to actually keep this story pretty short because not every story goes into like you know this person may want to be with you but it doesn't really matter if they do because until they heal this trauma you will never be able to be your own person. They will always put themselves in competition with you and they will always have to be seen as like the stronger person. So if you get too much attention, this person will, will sabotage you. They will, they, because it'll they, trigger them. They need the attention on them. They, what they feel comfortable with 
is to be in a karmic contract, which again, it's all about their needs. They want to be seen as perfect. That's the reality that they want to create. They feel so inadequate. And now they're going through stuff anyway. So it's like they're overstimulated because it's like no one's bailing them out. No one's fixing them. It's like you, you're like, I've already gone through this before. You don't like relationships. You get triggered by them. You focus too much on the physical and because you don't heal the past, it's like then it's like emotionally, like it takes you down and it's all because they need to forgive. And if you're attracting this person too, understand it's also that you would have to forgive. And this person, like you would say, doesn't deserve forgiveness. However, spirit says that's the whole thing. It's like when you forgive, it's that <clears throat> you forgive regardless of what the situation was. That the sometimes there are such wounds that we have that are so deep and we're like, okay, but you were my mother. You should have loved me. You should have supported me. You were my father. You should have been there for me. You should have loved me. You should have supported me. You know, we all have our ideas of what that support was supposed to look like. And but the case is, is that there still is unconditional love. Otherwise, you wouldn't be affected. You'd say, I don't care. I don't really care. You weren't there. I don't care. Without bitterness, without holding on to it. And I believe that type of pain really can't be integrated until we see things from a different perception. And I feel like this person is extremely wounded. And I feel like that's the energy that you had grown up with at one time. That's an, and so like where you needed to forgive certain people and you never really forgave. So it plays out within your relationships because you're a magnet, again, of who and what. So it's not so much like, oh, this person like did so much stuff to you, so you need to forgive them where you forget what they did. No, we don't forget what they did. It's that we practice forgiveness, and forgiveness is I forgive you, but I set you free. I'm not still holding on to you. What you did to me is not affecting me anymore when we can forgive fully and let go. Otherwise, we're still, like I said, that energy is still affecting us. So you might not have gone through as severe trauma as this person. But in order for you to integrate the spiritual lesson of forgiveness, you had to attract somebody that did something to you that you're like, I like they're they don't deserve to be forgiven. <clears throat> They knew exactly what they were doing. And spirit will say, yes, that's true. But the universe will always collect on this energy. So it's not up to you to hold resentment or anger. Because it's only going to prevent you from moving forward is what spirit's saying. Altered. Again, the way that you see this person is now like, again, altered. You will never be able to go back to this person because it, they're unreliable. They're unreliable. Yeah, the way that you see them, it's like you don't see them for the same person that you first saw them as. And they did that and they did that through their character. That's what you see. But again, you attracted this person because you needed to heal. Look at my inner child cards. So we're going to see again, because I don't really feel like this person is mature enough to, to heal themselves. They don't really want to heal themselves. Or, or if they're healing themselves, by the time they actually get healed, they're not going to be anywhere. You're going to be so far past them. And you just don't see them the same way anymore. So there's no point. But we still have to say, okay, why did I attract this person? What was the whole point? What am I need to integrate? And this is protection, card number one. Unworthy, card two. Support, three. 
confusion, four. Shame, five. All these cards are horrible. Like, I mean, <laughs> nurturing was actually not that bad. Okay. So I just feel as if you grew up in an environment where you didn't feel safe. You didn't feel safe. You were made to feel unworthy. So growing up in an environment where you didn't weren't supported, you were shamed. And that could be your grades weren't where they should have been. Maybe you had a, a speech impediment. Maybe you walked funny. Maybe you were a little heavy. Maybe again, like you were too skinny. It doesn't... It's whatever the parents, whatever the environment, and that means teachers, relatives, close friends, even friends of parents, parents of close friends, rather, like any anyone that had the potential to affect the way that you viewed yourself. And so, again, that didn't need to be traumatic to anybody else. It's traumatic towards the child's self. But I feel like it's again you weren't supported again support that's what gives us protection when we're when we're uh young right but if we feel like we're shamed then we feel like we're unworthy you know that we're not good enough that there's something wrong with us and then there's a lot of confusion there's a lot of feelings of why doesn't my parents love me why can't they forgive me? Or why can't they nurture me? Why can't they emotionally be there for me? And so I feel like parents sometimes aren't there for, for children for a lot of different reasons. They are going through their own trauma. They are, there's only one parent. They go through life experiences the same way that we do. So they, you know, have to deal with sickness. They have to deal with bills. They have to deal with, you know, parents and ancestors of that aren't treating them well. You know, they've inherited that trauma as well. And so I feel like when a child is shamed, it's not that one time that the child is shamed. It's like it's a continuous thing where the child feels unworthy. So you lived in an environment that made you not feel loved. This person, again, doesn't show any love. That's why it wasn't worth to look any further because it's like they just go around using people. They only care about themselves and their life is actually falling apart. I mean, that's why you don't see them. Same, And it's lucky that you didn't see that it's lucky that you did see because that a person like this is all about betrayal. That they only care about themselves. They're majorly stubborn, you know, and it'll only always, 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 always lead to like neglect. But if you're with them, then you're self neglecting yourself. And that's how you abandon yourself. And you grew up without that support, without feeling safe protection where really we're our own protection we have the gift of discernment to be able to see when someone's not good for us and that's really what it is it's like you never got involved with this person thank god because they're not you know they need they need a lot of healing and they don't want to do the healing so we end off with one more card we just ask a little bit different style reading today. But let's see again. One more. I am light. I always have hope, no matter the ordeal. I have faith in a better future. I turn darkness into light. I open my heart to others and to God, and I am spiritually strong. I draw light to me and shine with all my being. So this was about healing. This connection was all about healing. Again, whatever, like always have hope that that's really what it is. Like you didn't settle. You're like, oh, this is all that I can have. No, the spiritual lesson was to learn that it's always better. And no matter the ordeal that you always have faith in a better future, like that's the, being connected to that is, and the way that you grew up, you always knew that there would be a better future. 
but turning the darkness into light it's this person brought up things that were inside of you which is again that coming from a place of shame this person didn't make you feel safe that is up to you now to make yourself feel safe and that's how you can really let go and integrate shame because you're seeing a different version of yourself that shame was put on to you it was passed down from the ancestors as as wounds from the ancestors right but we don't know what those ancestors lived through that made them have that perception so angry parents tend to again project but then we can look at the situation more from a spiritual perspective like i said and when we do that opens our heart because otherwise if we're holding on to that energy like of pain and anger then when we actually cut ourselves off from love because we cut ourselves off from others and to god and god is love to be spiritually strong is to, again, be in the energy of love and to draw light to you and to shine with all your being, that to be unapologetic about it to so that you can, again, be a magnet of who and what is more in alignment with you instead of the traumas of the past. You had to, again, attract this person into your life so that you can learn like, wait a minute, I'm undervaluing myself. If you're someone that's, that, you, you know, the person's not creating support, they're not, they're making you feel unworthy, their relationship's too confusing. You might have had to grow up in that, but you don't have to live that now. And it's like, you have to go back to your original energy, which is light, which is love, which is that unconditional love. And I always say that because in the beginning, we always say, like, how do you know where to start? How do you know how to be in the flow of the universe? And that's always to be the energy of unconditioned love. That's how you become. You're, you are light. It's like, think of negative emotions, how heavy they are. But when you're happy and you're joyful and you're, and you're in the energy of unconditional love, you're light. Your, your, your energy is moving. And that's what spirit is saying. It's like... You had to learn how to forgive from the past. And so did this person. But before they forgive, they have to pay for their karma. And part of their karma is that you see them differently. That you're like, oh, I cannot. Like with like whatever this is, that like you're not. Your energy evolved past them. So I'm going to leave that there, Virgo. You let me know how you resonated with this one. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.